the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Father God, thank you for this assembly of saints. Thank you for having called us into your presence this morning, Lord. Yes. Thank Lord. you for having given us the ability to be here. Thank you for giving us a mindset to receive your word. And not only to receive it, Lord God, but to apply it. Yes. We pray, Father, that this day, even yes. as you yes. teach us your principles, your precepts, your, 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 your line upon line, precepts upon precepts, Lord God, give us the yearning to implement. Yes. Not to only have it in our minds, but to manifest it, Lord God, in our lives. Yes. That others might see your glory revealed in us and be drawn to you and receive eternal life. Yes. Strengthen us this day. Open up our hearts. Open our minds up to receive your word. Strengthen us, Lord God, in you. We bind the hand of the enemy that comes against us to steal the word from us this day. Solidify it. Quicken it in our spirit this day, Lord God. Yes. That we can manifest the fullness of the thing that you have acquired for us in Calvary. Yes. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, and, and one of the things is that Jim was talking about, and I still think yeah. that the stuff you was referring to as far as uh, how we've been communicating throughout history. Is is always been based on this, you know, this word of mouth thing, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, it's Brother Bell coming in. So, so one of the things is that I want to show the uh, share what you know what we talked about Sunday. I mean Thursday. Uh -huh. Got it off to, to 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 go with. Let's see here. You see it right on the screen. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so Jim, one of, the, one of the things we wanted to, to, to incorporate in our conversation, and, and I think it's even important to use that even when we're dealing with the, the things that come to our ear gates and our eye gates. Uh, the essential thought for discussion, hey, Brother Bell, uh, is the, uh, in the in central text is the fruit of goodness uh, for this Sunday. Uh, do the world and some believers view the image of saints which should be conform conforming to the image of God, Son, as being weak. You, you know, that's what we talked about before, right? We talked mm -hmm. about the third is, does these images, does these uh, characteristics uh, show a weakness or a strength? You know? Now, okay. that rhetorical? Yeah. Huh? Was that a question? Real? Yeah, well, I'm, we can go into it. I'm going to just go get these central thoughts out. These are scripts we're going to be using, right? So we've been doing Luke chapter 6, and we're going to talk about a tree is known by its fruits, right? Uh, and then we're saying the, what good is the desire to be approved of a good quality of life. We talked about last week as well, having quality required for a particular role, such as schools are here, are good. And then we got now what is morally right, righteous, or mysteriously balance of good and evil. That's a big one, right? I think even when we're talking about what's coming to our ear gates, I think we really do need to determine. We need to feel, matter of fact, you know, I think we can use even these things to filter out what's come, what should come into our, our hearts and our ears, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so therefore we should use these fruits. The adverb is a mother uh, could cook very good. Those are the type of adjectives are good. Now watch this. Those as a vision statement, we know we got that. These are scriptures that were used, Elder. We, we talked about last week uh, what the fruits of the Spirit is, right? And then Psalms, His way is perfect. And I'm saying that even when we talk about what's coming into us, we should try try God's way as far as what filter comes into our heart, right? If we don't do that, I think we're going to be missing it. Then you and I, uh, Jimmy, we're going to talk about the uh, parable of the prodigal son. Uh, and then we said, the Lord is my shepherd. And then we talked about uh, John 10. I think that's what we were actually trying to get to last week. It was John 10. 
uh, verses 1 through 21. Uh, but all I'm saying is, shouldn't we use it when we talk about the media? Shouldn't we use this 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 same concept? What 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 comes into our ear gate? What we're hearing, right? I mean, shouldn't we use that as as, as a method, right? Because because you know, there's if there's a characteristic of the fruit of the spirit, is it does it have any love? Does it have any joy? In it does it have any peace? You know what's coming into our ear gates, right? Does yeah. it have any patience toward yeah. other things, right? gentleness that does is it, is it being rude or being rough how is it how is it coming in and how we receiving it uh yeah. is there any faithfulness in it? any any meekness in it? any any self-control and what comes into our ear gates and eye gates when you talk about you mentioned pornography is that is that something in control or out of control right that's uh, out of control and, and see right here the bible said a good tree bring it forth what good fruit if good bring forth not good, a, a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither does a corrupt, a corrupt tree bring it forth good fruit. For every tree is what? Known by its fruit. There you go, by its own fruit. So every message, Jimmy, right? Everything that's coming in, it, 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 it should be, I'm trying to say, why don't we use that as our, as our measure stick? What comes into our, our mind? Uh, our hearts, our ears, we we should measure it by the fruit that is bearing. And if it's not bearing good fruit, then we need to move on to something, you know, we need to, I think you just filter it out. I mean, we should use these things to filter out what comes into our ear gates mm -hmm. and our gates. That makes sense? Because mm -hmm. if we're trying to go, well, go ahead, Jim. I think, I think as a basic principle, as we uh, renew our minds according to the word of God, then those characteristics that we're exposed to that are adverse to the word of God or to the yeah. truth, yeah, it's already going to rub us the wrong way, in my opinion, if we if our minds have been renewed after Christ, because then we have the, Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. And yeah. so anything that would be contrary to that, we kind of look at yeah, or man, that you know, and then again, at some point, we have to decide to, you know, a lot of people don't like the word censorship. But I think it's one of the greatest words ever created because it's uh -huh. one of those things that's necessary to keep your mind pure. You have to censor things, and also, unfortunately, nowadays it's kind of hard to determine truth from error or de deception. I'll say because mm -hmm. everyone has a plan. Everybody comes at you with an agenda. And so you can't really take things for face value. You have to ask yourself why or why is this coming to me? You can tell just like, you know, that's I've been with you and we walked up on homeless people or folks out there saying they need money or will you give me some money? And I've seen you several times. So, well, you know what I'll do? I'll take you in here and I'll buy you something to eat because you knew that even though they said they wanted money because they were hungry, you knew they had a hidden agenda. That was just what they said. That's not what they were trying to attempt to get done. So right. we can't always go by what we hear. We have to ask ourselves about the agenda that's behind it. Because trust me, I believe that every everything has an agenda behind it. And then if right. you don't know that agenda, then you're going to be fooled by the rhetoric. Well, you, you know, I th just think about that. That Once again, is using the word of God as using, using a even these fruits I'm talking about, even these characteristics, all these characteristics are supposed to point toward Jesus. All of those point toward the things of God, right? Mm -hmm. so, so therefore, I'm saying is, and even what we're supposed to be needs to be filtered through the word of God. You know, I, I like what the fact is where in, in, in uh, Joshua, the Old Testament, it says, Joshua 1.8, meditate what, on the word day and night, right? Yes. But it's, 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 it's so, so when things are coming, it needs to be filtered. I, I, there, there, instead, of, instead of censor, generally, it probably better be filtered because you can't, we can't censor something, but we can't. There's, a, there's a, a scripture that says that the spirit, the Holy Ghost, yeah, which is yeah. the spirit of truth, would take yeah. that which is Jesus and show Come it unto on. us. Come on. So we have an innate um, uh, a filter when we receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit begins to be our censor uh -huh. and, and, and the editor in the whole nine yards. And that's that's so important 
Right. For us because we do need that. We need to, as Jimmy was speaking out, my mind went broad on the things that come at us and the agendas that we run into during the course of the day. But what our agenda as a kingdom was concerned is his, is the right. Lord's. His will, right? Yeah, it's, it's his. What, what is it? Because you're going to get lies on the east and west, coming from the east and the west. Well, what, and the north and south. And the north and the south. But my question now becomes for myself, how does this align with Christ Jesus? Uh -huh. when, exactly. the, when the young man, was it Joshua that, was, that met the angel, the Lord of the host? Right. He, it was. He, he didn't come to take part. He came to take over. He, and I, exactly. and, I, and exactly. I think that's our, our perspective has to be now because if we are legitimately the sons of God, when we are hearing from the throne of grace, we know the right way. Right. We know what's truth because we know the Lord. Come on now. And so now right. it's, it's man, our mandate is to communicate that right way to right. all the numerous errors that are out there. Right. And, and right. I still get caught up in the one that says, love your enemy. End of all yeah. that. If we could love our enemies, there would never be another life lost in warfare. Right. Well, the thing about it is, it goes back to, again, I'm sorry to interrupt, is that uh, you're looking at that at the enemy and not the agenda behind it. And so, again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, so we can't really take it out on the individual that we see or whatever. We have to understand that something behind that particular person, and that's what we hate, the evil, not the person that's portraying the evil. And I think we can say sense the pastor in the fact that you can shut it off. Just like, say, for you got kids in your house, then you can give them, like, children internet. Then there's no way they can ever get to pornography or these witchcraft type sites or whatever. So you censor them so then they don't have to filter it because it ain't even coming in. You see what I'm saying? So censorship oh, yeah, yeah. Still I, means that you yeah. cut it off, that yeah. you can turn it off, that you don't have to listen to it, that you don't have to read it, that you don't have to go there, that you don't have to pull up that pornographic site. So you censor it, then you don't have to filter it because it ain't gonna be nothing there that you fit to filter because you already shut it down. But then too, I wanted to say too that um, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Sometimes I bear bad fruit. Does that make me a bad tree? Well, the, you know the scripture said that the only good, only good that's in us, and that's one of the things Bishop brought up real good last week, is the only good is God, right? Because right. Jesus, because even Jesus said, Jesus said, "Why callest me?" You know when that that rich young young ruler ran to him and said, "Why callest right. thou me good? There's not good, but but God." Right, so so yeah, but so yes, we and that's especially when the dispensation of, uh, of this grace we have, we have to give grace to one another, and yeah, yes, and that's what I was saying. Like when you were saying that, hey, if they're not displaying these characteristics, so on and so forth, so on and so forth, then we know. Well, I think, I think too, you the grace has to come in because uh, I think all of us would have to be honest that sometimes we display some characteristics. That's not so godly. Well, maybe y'all don't. I shouldn't speak that way. My bad. No, 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 I, I do. Think, I do I think sometimes. You're right. so, I, think, I, think, I think that's what we have to look at. The fact is that we as, as believers, we as people, we, we are growing, right? I mean, that's that's the whole point of it, isn't it? That mm -hmm. I think that's how we have to look at it. But, you know, Jim, I think the key to it is that when we can recognize when we're bearing those things that does not line up with God and then filter even our own action. I think when you said, I like what you said, I used it anyway, this Bible is a mirror. This, this, so, so when we want to see a reflection of what's, what's in the mirror, if, if our own image points more toward us instead of the image of Christ, that's what we know those are the things we got to work on. Yes, it, it, you know some That's a beautiful people, statement. That's a beautiful statement. Yes, and, 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 and a lot of times I think we don't know the benefit of actually compliance because the, the, the thing you asked before about the PV we were talking about that and the strength and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that PV yeah. That, that, there, and, and, and I, as I begin to examine it, I begin to realize that there is a strength that's shown in the world system, and there's a strength that's shown in the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. Those yes, sir. Strengths, those strengths don't line up with each other. Yeah. Uh, True. But you can be strong in the Lord. Yes. Or you can be strong in the flesh. 
and and you, your your behavior is going to be different depending on who you is. What I failed to do was to make the connection between being strong in spirit and what it gave us access to. So Jesus says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, then whatsoever you ask for my name, I'll do it. Exactly. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They speak with new tongues. If you love me, you keep my commandments. So there's an alignment that we have that gives us access to the things that were appropriated for us at the cross. That alignment has a lot to do with our character, with our behavior, with our, our mental programming, in a sense. Right. If we do that, what people get out of it is a representation of Christ that is legitimate. Come on. And that representation not only goes in our character, but it also goes in our functionality. So they shall lay hands on the sick is directly attributed to loving your enemy. Bless, I believe. Now, this Johnson doesn't know. No, but, but, but it appears as though there's a connection between loving your enemy, blessing them that's cursing you, praying for them that's a spite for you. You go on the second mile, turn the other cheek, and laying hands on the sick and, and recovering. Yeah. If we look at the master, he had certain characteristics that he displayed for the people. But then he had certain abilities that he, that he that he hey, one, he mm -hmm. also had certain abilities that were made manifested before the people too. And I believe that was the, the total picture. You couldn't do one without the other in in the case of the kingdom anyway. You know what I'm saying? Right. So there's a strength in the kingdom that looks like um weakness in the world system. But it actually leads you to a greater influence over everything because you don't speak to the wind and the waves in the world system and cause them to behave. But in the kingdom, you can. You don't call yeah. out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You may, you may have to turn the other cheek, but then you're going to still be able to lay hands on sick and heal them. You're going to be able to raise the dead. No right. Right. So there's a, there's a, there, there is a, there's a benefit in what we do. I, I guess I'm trying to say that uh, it doesn't look like we're exercising or even, you know, in the gym bulking up. But when we're submitting to the will of God, we're spiritually bulking up. And as right. we spiritually get bulk, we're able to exercise and manifest the glory of God even more so in the kingdom, I believe. Right. But so help me out. Help me out with this. Help me out. Uh, I, then how's this according to 648? Uh, how's that? How's that in the scripture? Yeah, let's take a look. Read it. One second, I'll bring it up. He said he's okay. talking about the uh one second. Because I mean we look at the things that the disciples were able to do just while he's searching, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. And Peter, Peter's shadow falling on people healed them. But Six. he still got crucified. I'm sorry, 643. 643. Right. And 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 and, and all, all, actually, all goes all the way to uh, he said, said, for a good tree bring is not for corrupt fruit, neither does a corrupt tree bring it for good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. You can read the whole thing for this, brother, brother uh, Val, this one. For a thorns men do gather figs, do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. Now, so now we're talking about comparing that 43 with 45. It says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now, what, what, I, what I, I, I agree with the fact is that the, the, the scripture is saying, what does a good tree bring forth and what does a Corrupt tree bring forth. And last week, brother, brother uh Bale, and check this out. I wanted to bring this up anyway, the scripture to, to I think better answer it. You can you can see here, and you see this Elton Johnson. Look at this right here. I'm gonna read this. This is the uh rich ruler. And I thought, Jim, we could this would be interesting, be use good discussion, even with Brother Bear question. A certain ruler asked him, saying, Look at this now. Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And, and the scripture says right here, Jesus said unto him, why callest 
thou me good. None is good. None is good. Say one. That is God. So, so I, I wanted to use that as a, as a, as a answer to my question to you, not a question, but to you, your statement is, I don't think we can pray anything good. Can I, can I, can I add to that? Yes, sir. Just real quick. If you go on to the, the next uh, scripture. Okay. One second. Let me Jesus. Just break it up. One second. I'm sorry. I, I, I took it down too quick. <laughs> Go ahead. So then Jesus started to explain him the Father's will. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or commandments, right, in this case. I yeah, think. well, his will, right. basically, his right. commandments. Yeah. It says, thou knowest the commandments. Uh-huh. Then he starts telling them what they shouldn't do. Right. And, and then that, if they can do that, then they'll be like he is, a good shepherd. They'll be a good follower. Correct. But if, but, you know, but, oh, so. but at the same time, though, right? He said, "Thou lack is one thing." Because the boy yeah. came, the boy came back and answered that question, didn't he? Yeah. He answered the question. Hey, brother, look at this. This boy said, and, and, and he said, "What he said? What he said? What he said? He said in twenty one." And he said, all these, look, hey, brother, I have kept from my youth. So, so, so when you said that, brother, I said, he said, I've been doing that. Yeah. Right? I'm just saying, this man said, I've been doing it. And, but, but now, when Jesus heard these saying, <laughs> he said to him, you lack one thing. That's yeah. Not, if you're going by the Ten Commandments, that's, that's, that means, you got 90. Yeah, yeah. or 99. You probably got, got a 90. <laughs> now, that 90 is pretty good <laughs> in, in this life, right? But but he said, uh, sell all that thou hast and distribute them to the poor and thou shalt have treasures in heaven and come follow me. And when the guy heard this, he was very sorrowful for he was rich, very yeah. rich. And look, I like this because <laughs> I, I like this one. I think it's early on, later on, but it, it says, uh, and Jesus saw that he was very soft and he said, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Then he said, it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye, which is a small door in the gate, than for a rich man to enter to the kingdom of God. And they heard and they that heard it said, look at that brother Isaac, who then can be saved? So, and he said, the things okay. with that, what is impossible for men are possible for God. Yeah. And, so basically, if, if you do what's needed to get into the kingdom of God, right. then you're you know, then that you can you can be good. <laughs> well, well, well I, I, I actually I took it from a different perspective. If 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 there's nothing that you can do that's good enough yeah. to get into the kingdom of God, there's nothing you can do to be good except for God only. Right? Yeah. So so it's only through the that's why Jesus Christ came. Because you know, I mean I was even tripping when the disciples said it, but I was tripping more, Jimmy, from what Jesus said. Why I'm just telling y'all, right? We're supposed to go forward. Well, then you know what? I, I, I hear everything he's saying, and 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 and, and I've heard uh, and I've heard the brother too, uh, Myron. But man, I I, I haven't left forty three. So what, what is forty? So what is forty three actually saying then? It's just, is it saying is it is it saying then that uh, if you're born again, then you've been declared a good tree? And therefore, you can't bring forth corrupt fruit because we all know that we still bring forth corrupt fruit. You know, we, we know that now. That's, we're right. going to be honest about that now. Exactly. We do still do that. So right. we That's can't. Because if we use this as a hardline definition across the board, then we'd have to say there's no good trees. 
Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's why. That's what I'm saying, Jimmy. Right. And, and, and yeah. I, wanna, and yeah. I, wanna point, I just want to point back to you. I'm saying is that that's why I like what Jesus' response is. The good tree is only going to be from God. Your God, God in you, not you. You are yeah. not the good tree. There is no good tree in you. There's no good tree in man. But good, even Jesus said, why call us me good? I, I'm just saying this. I even use the, the but then, of Jesus. Say, why call right, I got you. I'm with you. I'm with you. But if we stay back over in the context of six, he goes on to say, based on that 43, he goes on to talk about you'll know them by their fruit. So yeah. he, after he just said that, he talks about you know them by their fruits. Okay, so then say we just didn't have no other scriptures whatsoever except that block of scriptures right there. That's all we had. Right. Then that would tend to tell us that we need to watch a man's actions or his fruits. And yeah. we can determine by what he does, what kind of tree he is, and whether it's good tree or corrupt tree. Yeah. And, 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 I'm, and I'm saying, depending on when you saw him, you may call him a good tree, and then you can see him again. You may call him a corrupt tree. <laughs> so I mean, so so I mean, so to judge him, I mean, when 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 would you be right? Or oh, 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 what is it? Because it's got to be a deeper something to that, because that's it pretty. Is, it, it that's is. a pretty hard saying. You know what I'm saying? It, it is. But you know what? I like the fact is, and I'm using a good example of David being chosen by God. It says that. David was chosen because he's after the heart of he's a, he 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 was what we said that he the heart of God he was he he represented that same heart it was that that heart that God was looking at David David had a repentant heart uh, I I will submit to you that a good tree a good man is a repentant man but when he does bring forth bad fruit. And, there, there. And, judge, and judgment does not mean, or judging the trees by its fruit, is not judging them for condemnation. It's just judging that at this moment, you're not, at this moment in time, Jim, of a snapshot of a person, if they're bearing bad fruit at that time, that's, that's just what is coming out of the person. But it doesn't mean that person is not repentant enough to, 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 to change, right? I mean, when Jesus even said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I, I think that's what David had, a repentant heart. And I think that's what a good man, Brother Bell, is someone that I'm not, you know, because sometimes you're going to lose it. Sometimes you're going to get angry. I, as a matter of fact, I was getting ready to do another video telling people these characteristics does not mean you're not going to have anger, does not mean you're not going to lose your joy. A, a Jesus cried, right? He wept, didn't he? Jesus, Jesus said sometimes, how long would I put up with you guys, right? Jesus showed the characteristics of man. Jesus went off in the temple, Jimmy. If, 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 if somebody, but, but as it, in the temple, if you, if you were just walking up that day when Jesus went off, what, what would you be thinking? With no content whatsoever, except for he is turning over tables. <laughs> well, that's no different than Jimmy's. Jimmy's saying if if you saw him bearing <laughs> in a body in the backyard, bearing a, a package in the backyard, you wouldn't know what he was doing. You don't know because you don't have to say the content of it, right? Yeah. You, don't know you wouldn't know whether I was planting or burying. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so my point, I think that the hard saying, brother, Bell for me is that first of all there are no good tree except for so, God. Yeah. So you're never going to be a good man but you can be a repentant man. And then I like what he said in the scripture verse 35 is very important. What is in your heart? That goes even back to even brother I mean Elder Johnson when he was saying this and Jimmy when they're talking about the media. you filter what's coming in your heart. But the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And most people, when we come into the body of Christ, and I think that's why we got to be sensitive and patient with one another, is that when we come into the body of Christ, what's in your heart? 